Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Oh my gosh! So the chickens have definitely started laying again. We've not checked them for a couple of weeks, and there was twenty-four eggs in the nest box this morning. I think we're having scrambled eggs for tea. God, you want a flat egg? You don't want egg, do you? <laughs> Morning folks, welcome along to the freaking vlog. It certainly looks like the chickens have started laying eggs again, doesn't it? They caught us out there, so there's around a week's worth of eggs. Fortunately, we don't have a cockerel, so uh, they're definitely not fertilized. So it looks like I'll be having egg butties for the next couple of days to get through those. Um, we're in at work, actually I'm here already. Jack's fetching some of the second-hand casks that we got from Boggart Hall uh, because we've pretty much got all of our uh, Harrison's Brewery casks filled up with stock and we've got the vacant gesture and of course uh, the jaded pioneer to take out of tanks today. I need to put together recipes for next week and also order some hops uh, because after I've brewed this week which will be two batches of the vacant and a batch of bitter in the next fortnight, I want to try another experiment and do another uh, New England IPA style beer, perhaps reflect on it and uh, alter it a little bit. The brewery tour was a roaring success. I was really chuffed how that went over the weekend and it was really nice to meet some people who'd traveled down especially as well, like Rob and his lovely wife and uh, several other people like Michael came across um, to deliver some home brews as well. It was a really, really good weekend and I'm feeling a little bit worse for wear from it, to be quite frank. So, easing myself in this morning on a Monday. First thing I'm gonna be doing though now is uh, nipping up to Screwfix because I need some batteries. I ordered a couple of cheap pH meters from eBay, two different types to see which one was the best. And I also would like to see if I could uh, put some life back into my old pH meter that cost me 100 quid from Murphy's. I think the bulb is dead. Uh, you have to replace these bulbs on them. If it is, then uh, that's not an issue. We'll just use the cheapy, cheery ones until we can get uh, a new bulb. But the bulbs cost more than the two cheap ones combined. So if we get repeatable results from the cheap ones, we're friggin' using the cheap ones, you know it. So I'm gonna fire up the motor with its new battery in. It works a treat. Check it out. We're ready. Oh yes, baby. So the motor is working lovely. Still need to have a look at the suspension on the front. But yeah, we're fired up. Let's shoot up to screw fix and pick our battery as up. So we've got everything we need, including a new first aid kit. Right, we're gearing up for cask filling this afternoon. So we've got on the floor over there, I think you'll just about be able to see it behind the mash tun. A load of casks getting prepped. And uh, rinsed with acid, ready for filling. But I've come over into the corner have a look at all these little uh, bits that I've got here for brewing. So we've picked up a couple of these what I consider to be cheap pH meters and they are cheap. I think the pair of them cost less than 20 quid whereas if you compare that to this ultra pen which uh, was from Murphy and Sons this was around I think it was upwards of a hundred quid but unfortunately, the bulbs on them don't last forever. You have to keep them immersed in some type of uh, pH storage solution. And uh, if that dries out, then the, the, uh, the bulbs on the end just, well, they fail, quite frankly. So this one turns on 
Uh, so we'll calibrate that in a moment. This one doesn't, so I had to shoot out and pick up some LR44 batteries from Screwfix. That's what I was doing up there this morning. They were very expensive in Wilco's for a battery, so I decided I wasn't going to pay that kind of money for the Duracell ones. They wanted upwards of, uh, I think it was about six quid for a couple of Duracell batteries. It's a right rip off. Let's see if we can get get it working with just the three. Oh, I don't know then now. There we go, I can see some digits moving. It's very dim on the screen, it's probably not even going to pick it up on the camera. So I'm going to have a play around with these for a moment. Let's see if we can get, uh, get them to function and then we'll come back and we'll calibrate them. Right, so I've got the two cheapy ones working. Uh, let's change the battery in this one next. So where did I put the other batteries? Hold on a second, it's in the Wilco's bag. Here it is, these were the expensive ones. They don't do these, well they do do them, but they didn't have any cheap ones at Screwfix. So I had to swallow a bit of pill and pay, I think it was £4.50 for two of these uh, LR1s. So that goes into this expensive pH meter and we will, there we go, she springs to life. We'll just turn her off because obviously she's uh, going to start calibrating. Well, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, we'll just leave her. Right, she's off. So what we're going to do is fill up a couple of these tubs with this Murphy's pH buffer solution. This is the pH 7. Give it a shake. That should do for him. And then over here we've got some of the pH 4. So we'll have a little slurp of that as well. go. So what I'm going to do is pull the lid off of this one, turn it on, we'll get a pint glass with some water in, like that, and we'll rinse the probe here probe, that's saying that it's 7.6, so let's pop it in the four see what result we get. Oh yeah, I'd say that's pretty accurate. I don't know if we can zoom in on this, but it's, uh, it's reading a little low, 3.9, 3.89, but it's within, it's within sort of 0.1. That's not too bad, so let's give her a little bit of a rinse and pop her in the pH 7. See so if we're going to get a similar result there. You can see that? And at the same time, we'll do the same with this one. I've had one of these cheapy ones before. So let's have a look. pH 4.2. So that one read this red solution at 3.9. This one's reading it at 4.1, it's just dropped to 4.0. That seems to be pretty accurate then for me. Now let's see if we can get this one to work. Alright, let's pop him in there too. There we go, so he's reading, if the light's flashing he's reading. Ah, uh, he's miles off. 8.4 he's reading. Yes. 8.3. Right, well it just definitely needs calibrating, doesn't it? I think you can calibrate it by 
There we go, holding the lid. If this works, that's going to sort of save me about 30 quid on a new ball, a new uh, bulb for this. So, I'm going to play around again for a few more minutes and we'll come back and analyse the results. Oh my goodness, honestly, I need to get a freaking beer. I know everybody's brought me a load of home brews. Uh, I've left them all at the pub. I've got no beer in the house, apart from what we've got on tap. Give me five minutes and I'm gonna ease my tensions and explain to you all what's happened. Oh, thank God, yes. A nice pint of the Harrison's Brewery Stout. Mm. Oh. Thank the Lord. So, you'll remember just a literally fraction of a second ago, I was in the brewery testing out the pH meters, which I will come back to, but it's gonna have to be tomorrow, I'm afraid. The time is now seven o'clock in the evening. Uh, after I started to test the pH meters, uh, we had to calibrate one of them which wouldn't quite calibrate properly. It was the expensive one, would you not believe? Of course it was. But the other two uh, pH meters were actually pretty darn on the money for the kind of, uh, kind of cash we paid for them. Uh, definitely within 0.1 pH anyway, so I'm quite happy to use those going forwards. Um, they're just the cheap ones on eBay. You'll be able to find them. They're all less than sort of 15 quid and uh, you can basically see them as disposable. If they last you a year, then the price of a bulb for the Myron, I think it's Myron or My Myron, uh, pH meter that I've got is 65 quid. And they only guarantee that for six months. I don't need accuracy down to 0 0.01 of a pH, so the cheap stuff, go for it in my book, I'd say. Anyway, I was doing that and uh, a couple of mates turned up. One of them needed some steel for a project that they're doing, so I helped them out, gave them some steel. Another one of them wanted uh, some, some of the plastic firkins to grow some spuds in. So yeah, no problem, we can do that. Uh, and in the interim, after we had a chat and everything else and uh, we sorted these little bits out, which wasn't a problem, seriously wasn't a problem, I quickly realised we ain't going to get all of the uh, casks washed to get all the beer out of the tanks today. We didn't have enough casks. Quite a few of the casks that we've got the Harrison's Brewery logo on, we've already got full of beer. Bank holiday weekend coming up, we need to make sure we've got plenty of beer in stock. So we had to dig into the bogger hole casks. Uh, they were filthy, still on the inside. We're staining, it's not actual soiled dirt, it's just staining, it's beer stone, that kind of stuff. So they took ages on the cask washer to clean up and that meant that we were sort of hitting half past four and we still had a full tank to empty. Difficult times, hard work to do. Uh, so I did what I do best. I left Jack on the job and I went and had a pint, thinking yes, as soon as that's done, no problem, I'll have a pint, we'll clean up afterwards. I'll make an apology on the vlog for not finishing the pH thing, blah de blah. Anyway, we come home, the house smells like arse, smells like a teenager's sweaty foot. So I literally came in, I've had to blitz the place. I was back before Gemma. You see, Gemma normally finishes at half past three. So she's home a couple of hours before me and I don't get to see the mess. And uh, the kids have been looked after by one of their uncles. And in here, we the myth of the meth. So uh, straight away when I walked in, get tidied up, came in here, 
There was a mountain of dishes, cereal bowls, knives with butter on them because they've had toast. The usual de facto mess that teenagers and kids make. And I can't shift that smell. So I've had to light a candle. I've had to have a beer. I've had to try and calm myself down a little bit. I think this beer's gonna help more than anything else, more than the candle. So yeah, I've lit one of these uh, aroma candles. This is meant to be linen or something. Hopefully it'll move that smell from the house. And I've also just spotted, uh, might not just be, I might be a bit quick to blame the kids for the aroma. I've just seen some mouldy strawberries. Check that bad boy out. Oh, Ooh. yeah, look at the fur on that. Hey, oh my god, it's like my ball sack when I was about 14. So I think I'm gonna have to throw that in the bin. That might be contributing to the smell a little bit as well. But basically, what I'm trying to get across is it's been mental and uh, I didn't get to finish the vlog. But hopefully five minutes of me ranting straight down the lens is a little bit of filler for you. Tomorrow we'll pick it back up as normal and you'll want to tune in for tomorrow's vlog. Last week I said I'd provide a recipe for the stout and I'm going to go one better. You're going to have to wait for the stout recipe. Tomorrow I'm going to release the vacant gesture recipe. Fuck it. I'm going to share it with you all out there so that everyone can brew it. So if you tune in tomorrow, I will try and give you the recipe first thing in the morning and then we'll do a step by step brew day showing you how and when to uh, put in all of the ingredients throughout the whole process for the brew. Obviously the dry hop stuff. You'll just have to take it as it's written. You don't want to miss this. I know you don't. The Vacant has a cult following for sure. So we'll see you bright and early for tomorrow's vlog. Cheers.